Well, good afternoon, everyone. You all know me. I'd just like to say, just say a few words around the open letter I sent you on the 15th of April. Um, I've been making submissions to you now on the future of the McDougall Art Gallery for seven years, believe it or not, but the saga over its future started back in 2002 when it closed, so is now 20 years old, believe it or not, despite it being the only heritage build, building in the city not damaged in the earthquakes. It is the same as previous years. I'm just asking you to honour my grandfather's 1928 gift of the, of the gallery to the citizens of Christchurch for their art collection, and in respect to the gallery, honour your 2019 heritage strategy as it applies to your heritage buildings and retain it yourself for the storage and display of the city's historical collection as every other city in the world has done with their old galleries. Last year I spoke about how over the last 20 years the museum has attempted to carry out two redevelopment projects in which the gallery would be included in 2005 and 2020. The first was funded but failed to get consented and in respect to the present one it has been consented, of course, but I have been advised in writing by museum management that they are unable to proceed as they have not managed to secure the necessary funding, that they are unable to confirm any dates for commencing construction work, and that their board will make no public announcements until there is sufficient funding to commence construction. The museum announced this latest project in October 2020 at which time Council, in complete secrecy, leased the gallery to the museum for 50 years at no rental for their exclusive use as a museum without paying the courtesy of telling the citizens of Christchurch who happened to own it, let alone my family. But the museum was planning this project up to two years before October 2020 and trying to raise the necessary funds, so they've actually had over three and possibly even four years to do this and have failed so it is now reasonable to assume that their project will never be able to proceed uh, as planned, especially given the present economic situation uh, in the building and construction industry, which of course is very sad. So finally, it seems we have reached the end of the road. This 20-year saga, which has left this beautiful heritage building unused and deteriorating with no air conditioning since 2012, has finally come to an end. I mean, you've got to say it's a pretty ugly chapter in the city's history. So let's get the McDougal back to life as soon as possible. The October 2020 lease to the museum was subject to them raising the necessary funds for their project by the 31st of December 2021. And I understand the present situation, you, uh, you are, uh, the present situation is that you are able to withdraw from the museum lease and consider a different future for the gallery. Now your staff have told me consistently that the council has decided it would be too expensive to run two art galleries. Of course it is going to cost something to run it, as it would cost the museum if it was leased to them, and these costs would then be passed on to you in the annual museum operating grant. The actual additional operating costs council would incur running it yourself would be three to four full-time security staff, plus the electricity electricity costs of the air conditioning, plus a contract for cleaning. I mean, it's not a great amount, really, is it? And uh, I did mention in my, um, uh, in my letter that uh, the McDougall Art Gallery was actually run with only two staff for 50 years, but that wasn't enough, so that's why I'm saying you need three to four. But the most important issue in all this, as far as the Council's future costs are concerned, is the current storage situation at the Christchurch Art Gallery. I've been trying to tell you for the last four years that the Christchurch Art Gallery was only built to half the size requested by the custodians of the city's art collection at the time, and as a result, they are already short of storage space for the collection. This is space which is both air-conditioned and base-isolated, of course. As you know, in, the last year's, in last year's long-term plan, they asked you if it was possible to find another council building with some dry goods storage space where they could temporarily place packaging materials they receive when, when they receive visiting exhibitions. I understand you've not been able to find such space, 
But what their staff are not telling you is that if they do not obtain additional storage space for the actual collection within two years, and I mean, I've just picked that, I mean, some people would say it's right on now, but let's, let's say it's two years, they will be unable to accept any further works into the collection. I can only assume their staff do not want to emphasise this problem in the meantime, in case Council decided the answer to their storage problem is to make use of the old gallery. This is because they don't want anything to do with running another gallery, nor are they interested in a neoclassical gallery or the city's historical collection. There's only 15 to 18 per cent of the gallery wall space is actually devoted to the historical collection. I've just been around it and seen that for myself. This is what I believe your staff do not realise. And it has ended up creating a situation where the future of the McDougall is really being decided by a few members of your staff who happen at the moment to be in charge of looking after the city's art collection. This is completely unacceptable situation. I understand only one of their curators has really any interest in historical art, so by definition their staff must have a limited appreciation of art. The future of not of not only the McDougal, but also the ability of the city to display the millions of dollars worth of beautiful historical paintings which have been which have over the years been donated by generous citizens should not be decided by these members of your staff. I'm sorry to say that, but this is the, this is the truth. This is what this whole thing actually boils down to. My suggestion to you is get their staff and your staff to prepare for you a 20-year plan to show the actual estimated additional air-conditioned storage space they will need for the collection. Then you will understand the problem. And just to finish off, the irony of all this is that the, is that the work the museum is eventually able, or will be able, to afford to carry out on their own buildings will be planned by their next director, who is unlikely to be interested in displaying art as such, which is what the present one is, and therefore unlikely to wish to lease the McDougall at all, possibly. On the other hand, what is certain is that the next director of the Christchurch Art Gallery will definitely wish to run the McDougall as an adjunct gallery as it will be the only additional storage space for the city's collection that will be available and the city can afford. Thank you very much. So, <laughs> I wish you could tell me something. I'd like to say that it's good to see you again, but you've, you've had to repeat you know, exactly the um, representations that you've been made making to the council um, probably since before I arrived. So, um, you know, uh, I mean, thank you for the time and effort that you continue to put in. Um, it is a challenging issue. Aaron. Might as well get myself in trouble. Um, is, the, is the Robert McDougall allowed to break away? I'm sorry? Under the old deed and the gift to the city, can it break away and just become an art gallery again, form a trust, has volunteers, does its yes, own thing? Yes, well, the McDougal Act, as I said in my open letter, it only gives you the opportunity to lease it to the museum if you want to. Yes, but the, the, the Christchurch City Council owns it under the terms of the gift. Is that right? Yes, yeah. the council so what, owns what, the gallery. What yeah. Aaron's saying is, is that could it independently of its owner decide to be run by a third party? But um, your, I mean, the issue is, is that we could decide that it is run by a third party. Uh, well, the problem with a third party, uh, and I think the person you might be referring to has discussed this with me, or someone has, um, is that. Uh, to to uh, display the historical collection, it would then have to be lent, wouldn't it, to a third party who would have a lease of it. Um, I, I don't think that can work. I mean, art galleries and museums just don't lend all of their collections permanently to another institution. Mm. This is a problem. Okay. Um, oh, well, I think yeah. I, I think if if, if uh, that that's a problem. I mean, that's, that's what I've told this particular person who approached me. I, I just uh, I'm advised that, that that just really can't work. But if it could work, fine. So if it worked, you would be 
comfortable with the idea of. I'll only be happy when it displays the city's historical collection. Yeah, I, <laughs> I don't want it full of modern art. There's enough modern art just been around the art mm -hmm. gallery. It's eighty percent modern art. Right. Okay. Um, okay. Let's hope, Madam Mayor, the next time we see Mr. Say is at the reopening of the art gallery <laughs> and not here again repeating himself. Well, I won't be chairing any more annual plans. So you um, might be at the opening. That might be the one thing you do come to. It might be. There are a few things I am going to afterwards, but I shall just fade into the background. Thank but can you. I ask you, I mean, are you looking at it at the moment Look, that, that, with a view to bringing this saga to an end? The arrangements that we have with the, um, with the museum um, are such that we don't have the ability to simply walk away from the arrangements we've entered into. That is the advice that we've received. Um, and I think that's been a relatively public position. So um, a, a, a solution is, is, is really no, no closer um, to the position that we've, we've adopted um, uh, just because the expiry of the date has occurred. It, 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 it doesn't make the legal difference that um, I assumed and you assumed. That's what we've been told. But we're not taking our eye off the ball. You've, you've, you've come to make your um, uh, submission to the annual plan. Yeah. And again, um, it is in a, it, it, it's in a process um, where the museum, in terms of the museum, we have to look at the funding that we allocate to the museum. And we've, we've triggered a particular process in that regard as well. But the rebuild of the museum that, that longer term project still doesn't have the funding um, attached to it, but that doesn't give us the right to overturn um, the lease that we've entered into. That's my understanding of the current situation. But we will provide you with um, with the advice that you know that that we have, and um, staff will follow up with you so that you get advice um, as to what what the situation is. Mm. We'll keep you informed. But I mean, you do agree you're going to have to decide something. <laughs> yes. Well, yes, not decide we do agree. All sorts of things. Yeah. yeah. On that we are agreed. Yeah, right. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you. All right. So that um, brings us to the conclusion of our annual plan hearings today. And um, I would